Hi, I'm Ed Edmonds with Distortions Unlimited, and I am here today to talk about the monster that inspired me more than any other, and it's my favorite monster. It, there's a lot of great monsters out there, and you might be surprised at the one that I love the most, but we'll go into that. So, I'm a kid growing up in the 60s, and my influences were Planet of the Apes, Outer Limits, Twilight Zone, Oh, so many, so many movies back then, uh, Invasion of the Saucerman, these kinds of things. Um, but the one that tripped my trigger for whatever reason was uh, John Chambers' Sixth Finger in, that was in the original Outer Limits series. The Sixth Finger mask, I don't know, it's like a perfect mask. Now, my second favorite mask is the alien from Alien, the movie. Uh, Giger changed everything with that, with that creature and the face hugger and the chest burster. Really changed the whole direction of the movie business. So I truly love that, but it's still second place. Doesn't mean it's not as good. It's just what affected me. So. I saw this and I used to watch The Outer Limits with my best friend Bob Taylor. And we would, a lot of times it was reruns, we'd stay up late and um, watch these things. And I found that I was having a very different experience than Bob. Bob was like, ooh, that's a scary, cool monster show. And I was like wanting to be the monsters. And that's a little weird, but this one in particular. Now, Marcia scoffs at me. And it's very, very nerdy. I mean, nerdy for nerds, but I actually wanted to look like this character. And I, if I had the wherewithal, it's probably a good thing I didn't and could have found somebody to do it. This is what I wanted to look like. Now, I'm actually a very normal person. I'm not freaky and strange. This I'm a little strange about. Now, I was willing to compromise and I still haven't done it, but to just point my ears and point them like Spock, that was another favorite alien. Um, but this mask uh, and, and the actor, David McCallum, that played him was so perfect. Um, but John Chambers would put this on. Now this was um, a makeup. It was uh, foam appliance, 3D foam appliance. I believe the ears were put on separate. Uh, took him many hours to make up um, the guy, but it just, I don't know, it's just perfect. John Chambers, like his Planet of the Apes, I don't know, they were just magical to me. And I, and I understand Rick Baker did a really clever thing, how they could animate better and so forth. Still love uh, John Chambers' original uh, designs. So that's my weirdest thing hopefully but that's one of the the weird things that uh, uh makes me a true monster nerd but i gotta tell you a story before i go about this mask when in the uh 80s i think it was 83 or something we uh got in contact with a guy that had written a book um, um i forget the name of it oh that's terrible but al taylor had been in contact with all these makeup artists back in hollywood and and done stories on them for the book and um and so we he got together with us for some reason and 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 but anyway we decided to mass produce some of these great old monsters from the past and so um one of them of course I wanted to do the six finger, so six fingers. So I, he made the arrangements, contacted John Burton or John Chambers, and John still had the molds, unbelievably still had the molds. And this would have been, you know, many years after the show. The show was probably 64, zoom up to, you know, almost 20 years in the future. They were in his crawl space at his house. And so, uh, Al asked if he could get him. John said he would very graciously. And of course, he's getting up there, you know, in age at this point. So he crawls under the, uh, uh, the crawl space in his house in uh, California and gets stuck. <laughs> 
Someday I'll tell the invasion of the saucerman the story. He gets stuck. And so he can't get out. So they had to call the um, uh, paramedics, I guess, or ambulance or something. And so they came out and they were able to grab him by the ankles. And thank goodness, he was able to hang on to the molds and drag them out. And uh, there was uh, the, the head mold and then there was uh, the ear molds. And so he drug them out and we were able to produce this thing and, uh, and made it available for a, a while. But it's one of our most collectible masks. Um, a lot of things back in the day, you know, we'd make them for a year or two and then they were gone. And, and I, don't think, I don't think people understood what mass collecting would become. So they weren't taking care of them and they weren't seeing the value. Uh, of them and uh, so there's very very few of those left but I've got mine and no it's not for sale that's the one I'll sell anything I I don't care you know I'm in business uh, to, to make and sell monsters that one it's in a glass case in my office and that's where I'll stay so that's my story or at least enough of it to make you want to you know lose your lunch or something but anyway six fingers